Hello everyone, what I'm going to be showing you how to do today is how to do maintenance on a bass guitar. Now this maintenance can apply to four, five, six, however many strings you have. And I'm going to be showing you everything from adjusting the truss rod all the way down to making sure the action is set right and the intonation is correct for whatever tune you're playing. And the intent of this video is by the time you're done watching it, you should have all the tools you need to know to adjust your own bass for your own playing style and whatever tuning you may be using. Now I'm a firm believer in doing stuff myself if I can. I really don't like paying music technicians or mechanics or anyone for that matter to do work that I feel that I can do myself. It's really not that hard of a job. The main thing is to just take your time and go slow. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. It's a job that can be done right the first time with just a little bit of patience and following the correct sequence. So for starters, you're just going to need a few basic tools. First thing you're going to need, you need a tuner because this step involves tuning your guitar to make sure various things are correct, like your intonation. You need star screwdriver or whatever screwdriver you need to um, access your nut or your truss rod adjustment. You're going to require an allen key of whatever size for your guitar to adjust the truss rod. You're going to need a screwdriver with whatever head you need to adjust your bridge. And you're going to need a fairly decent ruler, something with half millimeter increments like a small uh, mechanics ruler. Now I have a set of electric calipers I could not actually use the calipers because they were too bulky, so you don't need anything crazy. Just these few basic tools, something that's going to help you out, good set of tweezers. Forgetting those little annoying screws and they're not following all over the place. Also do yourself a favor, get a small container to put little screws and various parts in there so you're not chasing them all over the floor and you know where they're at. Something that's going to be a real asset to you in anything you do hands on is a clean work environment. So nice big table where you can work, put a towel down so you don't scratch your instrument and you'll be laughing. So the first thing you gotta do is remove your access to adjust your truss rod. Allow yourself a lot of light so you can see what you're doing and take it off. Now depending on how forgiving your base is for space, you may or may not have to remove two or more of the strings to get at your truss rod cover and remove it, but you definitely will have to loosen off probably at least two strings in the center to adjust your truss rod. In here this base has a 5mm allen key or hex for the adjustment, so I have to take these two strings out of here in order for that to happen. Now what you're going to be looking for when you have to make a truss rod adjustment is the actual bow in the neck is adjusted by this nut here and this base in particular came with a manual with factory settings telling you the clearance or the desired bow for the neck but I prefer either a perfectly straight neck or a neck with a slight bow in it because Basically, if there's too much of a bow in the neck, it's going to sound muddy, it's going to be hard to play, the action's going to be high. If the neck is too tight, then it's going to be flexed back too much, you're going to have a lot of fret buzz, it's not going to sound very good at all. Usually seasonal changes are uh, responsible for throwing your neck off, and that's usually when you have to make this type of an adjustment. This base, considering it's an oil finish base and it doesn't really have the lacquer to keep moisture out, it's not bad at all. Like It usually stays well within spec or how I like it. I usually don't have to adjust it. Some bases, like I've owned a Yamaha, I never had to adjust the neck on it at all. It just stayed rock solid all year round. And I had a Dean with a full lacquer finish and it went out like crazy. So as you can see here in this instance, it doesn't look like much but you can see uh, quite a bow in that neck and it looks far greater in person than it does on this video. And like I said, I like it flat. So what I'm gonna have to do is tighten the truss rod, righty tighty, lefty loosey. If I turn the Allen key counterclockwise to the left 
it's going to put more of a bow in it and I don't want to do that. I want to tighten it so I'm going to have to uh, adjust the allen key clockwise to tighten that. Now you're going to want to make very small adjustments at a time like eighth of a turn at a time and wait about 10 minutes in between to uh, make sure your truss rod settles in and then you can readjust it from there and see how good it is. So what I'm going to want to do first thing is loosen the strings right off on this neck. I'm going to want to bring it clockwise an eighth turn, stick the strings back on the base, tune it, come back in 10 minutes, see how the neck looks when it's all settled in. If I need to adjust it further I'll do that again and again and I'll keep doing it until I'm satisfied where the neck is sitting. It's important that you uh, make your uh, adjustments with the strings loosened off because it'll allow the neck to do its thing and then you can tighten it back up and it'll settle in. You don't want to make adjustments with the strings tightened up. So you can really see what a difference it makes having all those six strings on there in full tension in tune. Now that the uh, strings are completely loose, the neck is flexed back just a hair. So that, that tension really influences the neck. You can sort of see the nut in there. So I'm going to stick in my Allen key and I'm going to tighten it up one eighth of a turn. Like I said, do this a little bit at a time. So what can happen is if you go reefing on it and reefing on it and reefing on it, you can uh, cause permanent damage to your neck and you don't want to do that because if you loosen the truss rod out all of the way or tighten it all of the way, you may hear a loud pop and you'll end up taking it in for a very expensive neck job. So do little bits at a time. Chances are if your base is just needs some minor adjustment, it's no big deal. So I'm done here. I've uh, checked it three times. The total process took me a half an hour to make three adjustments, uh, 10 minutes per adjustment, wait time in between, and I'm done with the truss rod now. So that's the biggest part of this that most people fear and it's really not that hard or big a deal as you can see. That's the hardest part of this whole process so from here on you're smooth sailing. So uh, this video doesn't do it justice but it's almost flat. It's bowed forward just the slightest and that's how I like the action. That's how I like the uh, fretboard on this base. Now one thing you're going to want to consider when you're doing this is if you like to uh, use various tunings like uh, down to drop D for standard tuning for example um, you're going to want to leave yourself with some leeway because if you like your fretboard totally flat and you go down into drop D you're probably going to experience a lot of fret buzz because your neck is now lo no longer straight it's going to be bowed back slightly and that's all it takes to make a bass sound like crap so uh, just keep that in mind if you like to uh, drop down or change tunings find a happy medium and something that you like so I can either reinstall this nut cover now or just save it for the end. That's probably what I'm going to do because I'm done with this now. So now that I have the truss rod adjusted on this base, the second step uh, to this is adjusting the action or the string height above the fret. Action is important obviously because if you have too high of an action, it's going to make it fatiguing, uncomfortable and slow to play. If it's too low, you're going to experience fret buzz. It's not going to sound very good. So when you're adjusting your action, a good general rule of thumb, um, this can apply to a six or four string bass. It doesn't really matter that much because there's some room to play with this. It's just a general rule of thumb. A good uh, measurement is from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string, that's spacing in here. You want 2.5 millimeters for your largest string and two millimeters for your smallest string. If you uh, go to your 12th fret, all the other strings will fall in line when you make this adjustment. But, because my bass, each string has its own individual little bridge, I have to adjust each one in between those two measurements. But that's no big deal. It offers me the advantage of tailoring each string to however I want it. But it takes a little extra time, but it's no big deal. If you have one solid bridge, just back the uh, tuning off on your strings a little bit. Get your uh, largest string up to 2.5, your smallest string up to 2 mils on each end of your bridge adjustment or however you have to do that on your model and you'll be good to go. From there on, tune your bass. 
Take your measurement over again, your 12th fret, and once the measurements are correct, you're done adjusting the action. You're good to go. So for the purposes of this video, I have completely screwed up my B string. The others are good to go. No, go, I already know that because I did them earlier. But just so I show you, my B string is way low. It's at like one millimeter, which is far too low. It's gonna sound like crap, it's gonna buzz. So I'm gonna have to back off the string a bit. Take some tension off of there. You don't want to increase your action with the string tension at its max because it's a lot harder to do and you don't want to uh, bust your string. Alrighty. So I need to, this is my locking uh, nut or my locking bolt here. I need to loosen that off so I can make an adjustment. That's loosened off. And now I have another little bolt right in there gonna allow me to raise or lower my string. I wanna raise it, so I'm gonna do that. All right. Retighten my locking bolt here. And I'm gonna tune this and recheck my spacing. One trick is because if you uh, have your strings loosened off all the way, grab the string at the 12th fret here in the middle and just pull it up on it nice and firmly to get it seated back in there at the nut and at the bridge. You'll find it a lot easier to tune as you're bringing it up in tune. Just a little more to go. And we're good to go. I'm pretty satisfied with that. If you're having difficulty because you have a temperamental tuner or it's just not working out for you, you can also tune your larger strings by using the harmonic at the 12th fret. It'll bring it up an octave and it'll make it a little bit easier because your string's vibrating quicker. It's going to be like tuning a smaller string. So the next step to this, we've adjusted the truss rod, we've adjusted the action. Those two things are good to go. Next, we have to adjust the intonation. And if you picture the action as the height, intonation, in a sense, is the length. What the intonation is, is to make sure that your strings are tuned, that all the notes fall in line with the frets for your respective scale. So for example, if your intonation is off, you have your string tuned to whatever string it is, and you go to hit your 12th fret, uh, it won't be right and the farther up the neck you go, the more off the notes will be. So by adjusting the length using the bridge, we can make all those notes fall in line with their respective frets. And that's what the intonation is, it's very important. So again, I've adjusted the intonation already on these other strings because I did it earlier, but for the purpose of this video, I uh, threw off my intonation for my B string. Okay, so what has to happen here for us to do the intonation adjustment? is you have to tune your string so it's in tune. So there's my B string, it's in tune. And you're gonna double check this by your 12th fret harmonic. So just hover your finger just lightly over the 12th fret. And there it is. And you're gonna actually play your note at the 12th fret. And as you can tell, my intonation is slightly sharp. So it's off. And I have to adjust it. So to reiterate, you're going to tune your string and play your 12th harmonic. And your 12th fret should match your 12th harmonic exactly in tune at the 12th fret there. And because mine was slightly sharp, I'm gonna actually have to pull my bridge back a little bit to make the string longer here so it's not sharp. It'll bring it down flatter and that will synchronize all of my notes all the way across the fretboard. So before you go adjusting your string, back off the tension off of it again because you're not gonna wanna increase the tension on a string that's in tune. 
it'll be very difficult and you could snap it. So I'm going to have to loosen off my bridge locking bolt again. This is a star screwdriver. My intonation adjustment's back here. And I'm going to have to pull the bridge back. Quite a little bit, actually. So we'll go with that. I'm going to tighten all that up. Tune the base again. Check the intonation. If it's off again, adjust it again. Keep doing that until they're all good to go. So as you can see now, playing my B 12th fret, and it's perfectly intonated. That's no longer a problem. All the strings are done, and I can move on to my final step. So the last stage in this procedure is adjusting the pickup height to optimally have a good balance between tone and volume between the two pickups. So it sounds good. So um, I have my EQ turned completely off so it's not interfering with anything. So you're just hearing the passive sound of the pickups themselves. And I have my volume all the way up. I have the amp to a good volume where I can hear everything. And I'm going to put my blend on the neck pickup. Just play a couple open notes, turn the blend back to the bridge pickup, play a couple open notes, and assess the difference in the two. My neck pickup is quite a bit louder actually than the bridge pickup. They both sound good, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop back, I'm going to uh, take my screwdriver, a couple of turns. I'm going to lower my neck pickup a bit. Equal turns. I'm going to raise my neck bridge pickup a bit. Reassess. So I'm going to Turn the blend on the neck pickup, play a couple open notes. Back to the bridge pickup. And I like the sound of that, so we're successful and we're all done. I've pretty much shown you a front to back video on how to do all the adjustments. You'll find though with seasonal adjustments on your instrument, you won't have to really touch many of these steps because the biggest thing that will be affected by seasonal changes is your truss rod. And once you get that back to the way you like it, your intonation should be good. You know, it shouldn't fall down that much. You shouldn't have to touch it. Your action should be good to go. You shouldn't have to readjust this. It's usually a one shot deal. Um, I actually tested, uh, I intonated mine for E standard. If you go down to drop D, I didn't notice any problems with intonation, didn't bother it one bit. It was still, everything was still good to go, so you shouldn't have to worry about that.